on the several occasions I've met Von now, I've always been um, fascinated by the anecdotes she's kind of shared with me about the archive at Brinton's and how it really is um, a living resource that is used on a daily basis. This first slide, I think, really beautifully demonstrates how a good design uh, will always be a good design. The inspiration that the original designer did, Mr Holden, in 1941, he probably looked at something a hundred years earlier because this is very typical of around the 1840s. So even then they were looking for inspiration. And then Mr Meller in 1947, he, he did his interpretation of it. And today, even you know, 60, 70 years on, that design is still being used regularly. If you look at the red and the gold with the fleur-de-lis in the background, it's very classical. Uh, the green one, a bit more traditional. And then uh, the yellow one on the end, which is really up-to-date and modern. So you can see just from one design the different looks you can get, and it's still being used now. A lot of what you do is working with people to try and find historically accurate or things that are accurate to a period for a building. And obviously this is a huge London landmark, the um, St Pancras Hotel. Um, and kind of Brinton's has been linked with it in some ways, kind of throughout its history. Mm. We could remake it from the original cloth. And also, because you can imagine a hundred years later or so, the, the, the colours would have faded. So we, we, I couldn't find original design papers of that period to, so as they could match the navies and, and the colours. So historically we could get it back to how it would have looked at the time. And, and the other nice thing about this is, is, yes, they have done the original staircase and the original carpet, but all the rooms and corridors are very modern. I'm sure most of you have heard of um, Lucine and Robin Day, who are very influential um, mid-century designers. You actually worked with the Barbican. Yeah, the Barbican. You, for an and, exhibition. Yeah. and you helped them to, to, to basically go through the archives and they were original Robin Day designs yes. that he had produced. We had the original artwork that he did and then from that we would put it onto point paper and the other nice thing which, which, which they thought was nice is we'd actually got carpet samples of this work as well. What's really um, invaluable to you is that you have a physical mm. archive. Mm. And some of these designs that are hundreds of years old, you can, you can look at them. I mean, when, when these designers started off, they used to um, paint, paint, paint it all out first as a picture, then show it to the head designers, and then whatever got chosen, then got put onto point paper, and then mm. it got made. Well, all that goes into the archive, whereas today, if you're digitally doing it, the things that aren't made, are they just, are they wiped off? Yeah. Who knows? But I mean, we, we keep that, so we've got the artwork with it as well. What often strikes me is how vivid and kind of colourful oh, the yeah. carpets were. Yeah. I mean, yellow was quite a, a, an important dye around. Uh, the Prince Regents uh, liked yellow and they just perfected quite a, a bright yellow at that time. Carpet was quite a precious thing as well, wasn't it? And Very an expensive, expensive thing a work to of produce. Art. It was actually laid in strips which might have been sewn together yes. or tacked down. But, you know, Natural. it was only, you could only be a certain width. Yes. And now we've got reached the other end of the spectrum where you huge, you can, it's huge. absolutely enormous. Yeah, mm. and, but you, you do also work with quite contemporary designers on, on things, so like the Timorous Beasties and oh, yeah. Chris and Susan Argo have recently kind of been um, working in the past few years. Yeah. And um, particularly Timorous Beasties kind of actually take some of the, the yeah. quite traditional motifs um, and use them in, 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 in a. Um, they change the scale and, and the colouring, but actually yeah. quite true to the original form. These um, Katagami stencils that you have. We've got the largest private collection okay. in, in, uh, in England. So these designs on the left-hand side are actually... How we've used yeah, them. Yeah, and available to buy. Yes, as well. that's th th those yeah. are all in our, all th those four there are just an example of what's mm. in our Katagami collection. We've got quite a few famous names yeah. associated, there's Marianne Dawn from the 1930s. But she what? was a very iconic designer. She was, in carriages, the, yeah, yeah, and ships, the cruises and things. Yeah, so very really deco with that Art Deco style. Mm. And yeah. you've got some of her designs yeah, and then so also people got like... Voicey, yeah. Morrison Company. 
now that I've been doing this for about 10 years, what I've increasingly re realised is nothing is new. And designers are always using historical references or traditional methods. And I think as we become more digitised and we have the capabilities of doing ever more kind of interesting things on a manufacturing front, people are appreciating kind of the handmade, the handcrafted and the traditional a lot more.